All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to try and free form uh, this video on a process in Pro Tools called Beat Detective that helps you kind of fix up the timing on um, various types of instruments. We're going to concentrate on percussive instruments or drums. Um, we have Keaton to thank for this awesome project that brought in some live drumming by Andrew. Um, let's give it a listen. You might know the song. I don't, or I do now. Who is it? Triple X Ten Son. All right, and the first thing I want to point out is the tempo that we have, which is at 140. I'm going to say that that's probably twice as fast, and it's actually at 70. So just give a listen to the, the click with this. So when we count it, and it's important, um, we're still counting at 140. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, four 2, 3, 4, 1. So just this section here, as it says in the timeline, is, is going to be four measures. Um, even though we would normally probably count that as two. Um, in any case, it doesn't really matter for our process and what we're going to be doing. We are going to concentrate on this first four measures um, section. So a couple extra added little cool things we're going to learn. We're going to learn again about groups. So if I come over here to a new group, and I'm going to call this group drums, and I'm going to make sure the kick is in there, um, and all of the associated drum tracks for the moment. Um, drums was a bus that Andrew made for the session he was working on. He also was adding some kind of a sample. We're not going to deal with that right now. So by creating that group, what we're able to do now is edit, as you can see, um, uh, edit across all the drum tracks in one fell swoop. It's going to make it pretty um, convenient for this process. So I just want to count out four measures. One, two, three, four, two, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. All right. So I'm just going to use tab to transients, get over to this section. Now that looks like it really went into the waveform, but that was actually a, some kind of drawing bug. So it was really just before the waveform, so not to worry. All right, so we can listen to this as a loop. All my tracks got cut, so that's super convenient. All right, you can hear these, um, these snaps, which I don't know why I don't hear those, um, but we're going to deal with those later anyway. So I'm going to um, mute the snaps. And we're just going to concentrate with this four measure loop. Okay, and you know, totally natural, good drumming, but some of these kicks are a little bit, a little ahead. The loop just sounds a little bit r ahead. But there we have it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that comes after it for, this, for the purpose of the demo. All right, so now we have a four measure loop. We have a kick track, a sub kick, our snare, our overheads, um, and such. Um, so the process that we're going to use is called Beat Detective, and it is under event in Beat Detective. And what Beat Detective does is it's going to sense based on transients where, um, you know, where the hits are, where the transients hits are. So for the kick drum and the snare drum and things like that. Um, it's a multi-step process and it, what it's going to do is going to cut all of these tracks into the requisite components or, or into pieces and then kind of quantize them to the grid. And it does some other cool things, like um, instead of leaving you with a bunch of space in between um, 
each clip, it kind of brings previous or post um, parts of those tracks to kind of fill in the holes, uh, but you'll see all that. All right, so most importantly is to capture the selection in terms of length. And because we're on the grid already, it's already seeing that it's a four measure loop. Okay, so I'm okay with that. I don't need to hit capture. I can, but I don't really have to. We're not gonna be doing any bar beat marker generation or groove template extraction for now. What we are gonna do is clip separation. Um, and it, as I mentioned, what we're gonna see is that it's gonna sense transients and ultimately cut all of these tracks into the little pieces. This is probably the section that's most complex in that the overheads have picked up kick, hi-hat, snare, hi-hat kick is my guess, right? Kick, kick, um, and we need to cut all those into pieces. And with multi-track, just a heads up, there are some artifacts that can happen in terms of phasing because we have microphones that are picking up different drums at slightly different times and we may, I may or may not try and fix that as we go. All right, so in clip separation, we need to hit analyze and it goes through and it analyzes where the transients are. And as we bring up the sensitivity, you're gonna start to see these purple lines pop up um, and you need to, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, you need to do this in a way where you raise the sensitivity enough to get all the hits, all the transients included. Right now, we're still missing right here. And you can put in manual. We may end up doing, no, that looks like it's pretty good. If I look at all our tracks, okay, the kick track, it's probably too much, but that is, um, you know, that's bleed from other mics as well. This is the snare drum in the kick mic, um, but it's in line and it should it should be okay. So we're at 18 percent. I see slices at every spot on the timeline. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, hit separate. We can go over here. You know the resolution. It would only put it on the bars. Here it would only put it on the beats. But here uh, it will get more um, sensitive essentially. And I'm going to go ahead and hit separate. All right. So now we have individual cuts. Okay. If I took off the the group, we could play with each one of these individually. No need. All right. So we've now cut our selection into all of the transient components, and we're going to go to clip conform. And what Clip Conform is going to do, is once we hit Conform, is it's going to move these. And as you can see, let's just take a look right here, for example. This kick drum should be on beat one of measure two, but it's a little bit ahead. So hopefully, what we're going to get, and I say hopefully because I am hopeful, um, these tracks are going, or the clips are going to kind of quantize themselves to the appropriate grid values. So hit conform, and we get some separation here. So just to look again at that kick, that is perfectly on beat one now. This kick, all the kicks are perfectly set up to land right on time. Same with the snares right on beat three. All right, what I do see now is that this particular clip is falling short of the fifth measure but we'll be able to fix that or it will fix itself so i'm just going to listen all right so even with those little breaks in there you can hear it but it's not that bad okay and this certainly is problematic for our loop, but we're gonna let that be for now and see if Beat Detective um, uh, adjusts for it. All right, so we're back at Beat Detective and we're about to get into our third um, part of the process, which is edit smoothing. 
And what Edit Smoothing is going to do, it's going to fix all of these breaks, not by moving the clips, but by kind of extending this clip, for example, that is essentially um, before this hit. It will just reopen that until, you know, anything that would be before a transient. So just some air or, or just some room noise, essentially. So here we go. We're going to, uh, actually, we're going to fill the gaps, but we want to fill the gaps with crossfades. And crossfades are going to kind of help um, fix any clicks that we might hear. And five millisecond is usually all right. So hit smooth. You see how these things got back together. You'll see the crossfades at every point. You see that the kick is right on beat one of measure three. This is what I was talking about in terms of a little bit of phasing, where on the sub kick, it actually picks up a little bit later than the actual snare, uh, the kick track itself. And same with the kick drum and the overheads. And that's something that we can deal with either through time delay plugins or moving the, um, the track as needed. All right, so we're still short of this, this measure point uh, at the fifth measure. So I'm gonna adjust for that ultimately. I just wanna hear this with the click. All right, so it's still just a little bit quick, and I think that that's probably here. So just by extending the selection, it's interesting. You get kind of a cocoon feel um, by adding that, but I'm going to add it anyways. All right, so I'm actually fairly satisfied with how this turned out with just that first run through, fairly quick version of it. Um, but this is problematic. So I'm going to go ahead up to edit and consolidate clip, which is going to put all of this back together into contiguous um, regions or clips, plus the little bit that I added on there so that we could have and be sure that it's a solid four measures. Now, I want to take this out of solo and listen to the rest of the track again, still minus the snaps. Okay, that's eight measures. We'll go ahead here. All right, so overall, we have a tighter drum track. What we don't have yet are these snaps. And why don't I hear both snaps anyways? That is an easy answer. It's because my headphones are broken. I'm using the set of throwaways that are only coming out of one ear. All right, so I'm going to go in blind on this one. Deaf, I should say. And let's listen with the drums. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way this time around. Um, I'm going to put our snap group into um, make it active. I'm going to make this cut so that it just plays four measures. Get rid of this other part. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to use Beat Detective to try and fix up these snaps. If you listen, This one's a fair amount early, I think. As you can see, it should be on beat four, but it's way early. Um, also, we set up two microphones, and this looks like it might be the bleed, or maybe these guys are just super late. Um, but we're going to give it a shot with Beat Detective again. So that's Command-8. We're going to do clip separation. Uh, it is not picking them up where I want them. So I'm going to reanalyze this and see. Okay, that's better. 
There we go. So it was kind of picking up. This is interesting. We'll see what happens there. All right, I'm gonna let this happen. I could move this and maybe I should, but I'm gonna see, let it do its own thing. Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna reanalyze. Go back to the original spot. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits, which is what we should have in uh, four measures. Well, at 140. Uh, clip conform. Well, actually, let's separate. Let's clip conform. Okay. So this, I'm a little sketched out by this. I think we may have a mistake. That looks very early, but that's okay. We'll make some adjustments. Way early, way early. Okay, I'm not that concerned. I don't think yet, at least. I'm gonna bust a little bit of this off the back, move this over. Okay, um, I'm gonna take another little bit off there, move this over to four. Does that look right? Let's give this a listen. Okay, uh, much tighter. If I don't like anything, it's this right here. So my initial feeling about where it was cutting this off, I'm just gonna say goodbye. Because that was kind of like an early snap and hopefully it doesn't mind my doing that. Um, all right, highlight the whole section. What's going on back here? Ooh. A little bit of extra here. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that right away too. So, as with anything, not, not a perfect. Okay, now going back to edit smoothing, fill and crossfades, five millisecond. Okay, and it's fine. All right, and I am going to do the same thing. It sounds good. I'm going to do the same thing that I did here, uh, up here, and highlight all this blank right up through um, the fourth measure. I'm going to go to File, Edit, I'm sorry, Consolidate Clip, and now I have a contiguous snap clip. much tighter. Uh, I'm not going to try and fix the rim part at the moment. All right, so there you have it. We use Beat Detective to tighten up a four measure loop of the drum pattern, which now we can duplicate because it is um, solid and it should be lined up perfectly with our MIDI. All right, and I'm gonna wrap this 20 minute video up and I'm gonna come back and do another video um, about cleaning up these drums with some other plug-in effects. All right.